This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Thomas versus Mooney. Uh, you all have been dating for a little bit. You don't have any children between you. Ms. Thomas, why have you brought your boyfriend to court today? Well, Your Honor, I'm here because me and Chris have been dating for six months now. And Chris is much younger than I am. And I never dated no one younger than me. And I just have since, you know, I have, I have my senses that he's, he got someone else on the side. Mr. Um, Mooney, are you cheating on her? Your Honor, to be technical, no, I'm not cheating on her. To be technical. To be technical. <laughs> okay, wait. I'm, okay. Technical... technical versus actual. Are you actually cheating on her? No, I'm not. Okay. So what do you want to prove today? I want to prove that I am innocent as far as cheating on her because I know we just started off dating or whatever, but at the same time, I wasn't dealing with nobody before her. I'm only considering her saying that I'm cheating on her because the relationship she had before me, it wasn't right. So I'm just letting her know, like, I'm real about this relationship. You consider her marriage material? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying... <laughs> okay, now, look, if you've been in this relationship six months, you got to be thinking, like, is this, you know, a long-term thing? So I'm just asking. Yeah, but you saw... I mean, he took about three steps back when you, yeah. when you threw that out there. I mean, you, you just can't hit somebody like that just out the blue. I can. No, you can't. I you did. Gotta, uh, uh no. When we were together six months, you know, you were still kind of in the running. You were in the running. So I, I was in the running. I can't say... I can't say at six months you were the one. Now, ultimately, you did turn out to be the one. But, I, I mean, I can't say at six months... That, oh, yeah, that's the one, definitely. I didn't ask him that. I asked him, and I know that I was, by the way. <laughs> was I marriageable? <laughs> Were you marriage material? Right. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I went. So you know you were marriage material. I was, I am, and I was not campaigning to be your wife. I'm just saying, from the get-go, I was marriage material. So I'm mm -hmm. asking him, is okay. she, you know, not that he is or that he will, but, like, could is he, he in see the the, Whatever, go, go man. Go ahead and say it. You want to say it. Say I'm it. not going to say it. Yeah. I'm not. She's in the running. She has potential. Yes. Okay. All, All right. right. Is he husband material? Well, Your Honor, I'm trying to get married in two years. And the reason why I say two years, I'm actually going through a health situation. I just found out that I'm in renal stage disease. <gasps> and, you know, I know that Chris is much younger than I am. And I've been through a lot of messed up relationships. And I feel like I don't have any time to play. None. Whatsoever. So, either you are or you aren't. If yes. you aren't, you want to move on to the next yes. one. Yes. Right. Yes. I understand. That makes sense to me. So, how did you two meet? We met almost close by my job. And when I saw her, she was... She caught my eye. So, I took a chance and I talked to her. She gave me a... I ain't, she gave me a shot, but she let me know, like, she had just got out of... Uh, a, a, a bad relationship. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just give her a little time to deal with that first. Miss Thomas, what was it about him that you loved? He shows a lot of affection, like a lot of hugs, and he gives a lot of compliments, like, oh, baby, you look so pretty today. You know, I could just be getting off the machine and I could just be feeling all tired and wore out. And he say, oh, you look so pretty. And I'm like, you know, thank you, you know. So he makes you feel good. Yeah, he does. As a man should. Yeah. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> but you've seen signs. Yes, ma'am. Tell me about those signs. Well, the number one sign is when he's around me, your honors, he does not answer the phone. Even a text message. He will not text. He won't answer. And you think this is bad? And then, yes. <laughs> well, that way is because what will set Mr. Cutler up on edge is we're out to dinner and the phone rings or pings and I pick it up. It makes me look like I can't hold my game, you know? <laughs> so, I... <laughs> yeah. So, well, in our relationship, if the phone rings or pings or whatever, it is a sign of respect and, like, this is important to me that I be with you mm -hmm. as opposed to it being something untoward. Why does it feel like something else to you? Well, your honors, okay, I have not met no one in his family. Nobody. 
Okay. okay. Nobody. Why haven't you introduced her to anybody in your family? <laughs> now, the only reason why I didn't introduce her because I figured, like, it was still a little early for that because how I grew up, like, you actually got to get to know who you dealing with, like, fully before you even bring around your loved ones because... You just asked me if you could move in with me. But, yeah, you, but I can't move... I can't meet your family, though? Oh, boy, stop. But, look, but your I... honor, your honor. Okay, I'm waiting. I think, I well, at the time, I'm thinking it would have been good if we could have moved together, but you we could have got me. to know. But look, look, look. hit me out. Me hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If we could have got to moved in together and known each other, it wouldn't have been no big issue with me taking you to meet my family because I know you more on a personal level. I get that. Because, you know, it's just uh, my brother and I, we're the only two siblings. Mm -hmm. And our mother told us, don't bring him home unless you're marrying him. Have you ever seen him with any other women? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay, well, what happened? Well, my friend was at the corner store, and she called me. She said, Siobhan, you need to come up here. I said, girl, what's going on? She said, just come up here. I see Chris in the car with another girl. So, you know, I hurry up, I get up there, and lo and behold, it's a young lady sitting in the front seat. I walk up to the car. I said, excuse me. I say, is this Chris' car? She said, yeah, this Chris' car. I say, oh, okay. I say, where he at? He in the store. So I politely goes in the store. I go in the store. His ass got big as golf balls. I said, who? I said, who's that in the car? Oh, that's my friend. I'm finna drop her off. I said, well, I want to go. No, you, 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 you don't want to go. It's a more younger crowd. That type of stuff. Oh. And so, you didn't, he didn't let you get in the car? No, they pulled on off. What? Yeah. Wait. Pulled on off. You drove... You, wait, wait, wait. You, <laughs> you drove Did off... Did you say anything to the woman? Other than, who, is this Chris's car and so forth? Well, to be honest, Your Honors, the reason why he pulled off so fast is because I was trying to bust his window with a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and he drove away. He... Well, okay, that's, that's you, a whole new level of bold right there. Mm. I understand it looked bad. It does. It does. It looks, it looks bad. It looks awful. <laughs> but she didn't know that the lady that I had in the car, she was, before I even met her, she, grew, she went to school with me. So she knew me. But we just ain't seen each other in some years, and that was her first time seeing me in a, in a long while. So this woman had never been your girlfriend or lover in no, the past? No, no. It was just somebody that I had grew up with. He's telling a story. Because right before he came out, I had asked the girl, I said, is that your man? She said, yeah. He's my man. All right. So what did it look like when you finally got back home? Oh, yeah. I want to hear that. Oh, it was... It was, <laughs> it was on and popping, wasn't it? It was... Ooh. It was nuclear war. Okay, so the lesson, lesson number one, do not drive off and leave your girlfriend with another woman in the car. Don't yeah. ever do that. He was picking me up from the store. I'm going through his car, you know, like the little iron rust part. I found some lotion, some sweet smelling lotion. I'm like, who lotion is this? Oh, this is the type of lotion I found. Could you bring that up to the... Yeah. He said that's his mom's lotion. And his mom is 70 and disabled. And this is the type of lotion my mom used. Okay, let me see okay. that. Okay. <laughs> you see the difference, Your Honor? Yeah. And this is just a, yeah. a clean scent. Yeah. And it's not fruity. So, what she's saying is grown women especially older women, would not use that kind of lotion. They would be using, you, you would, know... You wouldn't use this? Oh, no. No. No, no. I'm, I, my fruity days were when we were young. Thank you. This is... I need some basic or... Or either, like, a really nice fragrance. But why yeah. is this a young woman's thing? Because young women want to smell like strawberries and peaches and bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Grown women don't want... All right, I tell you what. I'm gonna call my mama. She's the same age as your mama. Mm -hmm. And we can ask her. Then we have three, what, four women at that point, whether or not we on point. Hello? Mom? Hey, hello. Hey. 
How are you? I'm good. How you doing, sugar? I'm fine. Mom, I'm in court. I got a case in front of me. Okay. And I need your expertise as a mature woman. Me and Mr. Cutler are having this dialogue about whether or not a mature woman would use a fruity scent. What kind of lotion would you use, Mother? Well, I use the classic lotions, the ones with a subtle or mild fragrance. I wouldn't... Uh, I, yeah, that's pretty much the only kind of lotion I would use. So would you use a fruity scent like strawberries or peaches or anything like that? No, that's for young women. I'm too old for that. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Love you. Love you too, Shook. Case closed, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> okay, well... That's right, uh, Your Honor. If the scent doesn't fit... <laughs> what, what goes with that, Mr. Cutler? Right. You, you must... You must acquit. Okay, there you okay. go. You go. So, <laughs> all right, so, so... Was it your mother's lotion? No, Your Honor. I don't, the reason why I said it was my mother's lotion because the lotion was really hers. It was just old and it had been in the car for so long. Well, y'all only been together for six, six months. months. How old was it? <laughs> it, it was about a, a about, I didn't even you. I didn't even like leave a, a pop cup like, in your, in like your car months. yet. So, all right. Do you use fruity no, lotion? No, I do not, Your Honor. No. Was this your fruity lotion? No, Your Honor. Okay. Was that her lotion, or was it somebody else's? That was, that was her lotion. That was her lotion. Your Honor, you that see... That was her lotion. That's why I don't... That's why I'm scared to date what... and get serious with a younger man because he think, my man, I'm 35 years old. You think two months, I'll forget what lotion... Don't you think if I forget my lotion in your car, I'll be like, where my lotion at? Because I, I use it. And then you're going to sit here and lie in the judge's face and say, it's my lotion? I got to tell you, oh I'm not God. buying it. But what's interesting, Mr. Cutler, is that... As I was going through the court file, I found this. A text message that you, Mr. Mooney, sent to court personnel that had been working with you through this matter at 8.37 a.m. this morning. And you said to her, I know you just met me coming down here, but I do feel some way when I see you, I want to get to know you. This was sent to one of our female court personnel today. You nothing but a womanizer. And you wrong in every type of way. <laughs> Darling, I can see it all over you. Tell him how you're feeling. I knew something was up with you when you asked me the first week that you met me if you could move in my house. Then you want to sit here and lie to me and lie to the judges and say that it's my lotion that I love. And then you want to sit here and make it seem like you such a good man and you this and you that. I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't. I don't. I don't. I've been hurt so much, I can't even cry right now, but I'm hurt. It, it was just a lot of things running through my mind. Like, I've been having slight doubts, trying to overthink stuff, because I've been hurt, cheated on. Well, if you've been hurt and you, and you know how I feel, why do you want to eject me to being hurt by you? the court ordered you to take a polygraph test. And we have the results. <laughs> the court would like to call Mr. Kendall Shull of Kendall Investigations. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Shull in? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Shull, you, you would head over to the witness stand, please. Yes. Mr. Show, how are you today? Good, Your Honor. Thank you. Well, it's good to see you. Good to see you, too. So you examined Mr. Mooney. I did. You asked Mr. Mooney, during your six-month relationship, have you had sexual contact with anyone other than Ms. Thomas? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined he was Truthful. I think
thank you for not cheating on me. But it seemed like you were on the verge of wanting to have intercourse with someone else. So I think that we should just, you know, we can be together, but I think we should take our time. What do you want to do in this relationship? I want us to be around each other, like, more and more so we can fully understand the ins and outs of our lives. I do want the relationship to last a long time, have family, future. Right. So you everything. want this relationship to work? Yes. Okay, so are you gonna introduce her to your family? Because look, if you only love her behind closed doors, she's gonna close the door on you. Yeah. yeah. You all were childhood sweethearts. You've known each other for 40 years. Uh, you reconnected later in life, but now these allegations of cheating are threatening and putting your relationship in jeopardy. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jones, you've opened this case today. Tell us why. He seems to have some habits that I'm not comfortable with. I don't know if he's cheating what he's doing, but he's not doing what he's supposed to do. Something's just not sitting right with what he's doing. Right. Something hasn't been right for the past six or seven months, I would say. I've known you all my adult life, and I know when something's amiss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking you've known him longer than I've known him. Yes. So you know when something's not right. Yes. Your woman's intuition's all over it. Right. All right, why is she not feeling right, Mr. Chambers? What have you done? Now, honestly, all right. back in the day, uh -huh. She knows that I used to be a player, a womanizer. I was okay. good at it. You were good at good. it. Good, good at it. I was successful. What do you mean? You were successful? Yeah, I was successful. And okay, what does success look about like? It. Huh? If, what does success look like as a, as a, well, can I say this, an old school player? Well, back then it was hitting a home run. Oh. Oh. All right, and you see, can't make it plainer than that. He thinks that's okay to brag about that. And I'm not comfortable with what's been going on lately because of how he likes to brag about it. Well, I don't think it. he's bragging about it. He's saying it was what it was. He's bragging so, about I don't think how he's he used bragging. to be such a player and how great he was, and I don't think it stopped. So what does that look like? I have something that I call the 99 plus 1 theory. I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> if I'm giving you 99%, which means if I'm cooking, cleaning, washing the clothes, cutting the grass, paying all the bills, handling my manly duties in the bedroom. I can do whatever I want to with the 1%. No. So, wait a minute, let me in, let me in. Wait, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait. 99 and a half won't do. I got to have 100. Wait, I, I want to be clear, you listen, <laughs> but not to all of it. Yeah, I'm listening. Wait, oh, so you listen. said... No, now, Keith, let me listen make sure, to it Mr. all. Chambers, listen to it all. Mr. Chambers, does that include cheating? Back then, <laughs> back then it did. Back, back then, then it did. Yeah, back no, then it did. I was okay. a notorious cheat. Because okay. I said I gave you 99%. So you're doing all this. That means you can do this one I thing. I can do that one. You want okay, to write you... that down? Yeah, I'm going to write it down right here. <laughs> uh, all right, but here's the thing, Mr. Cullen. Now that, you, now that you've heard him, uh -huh. I do, I do like the 100. I like the cutting the grass. I like the, uh, mm -hmm. you the know, cooking, the, the cooking, cleaning, the cleaning, the laundry. The laundry. A foot rub, you left a foot rub out. That's important. Mm -hmm. I know you like all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and that's 100. 100. And I give you 100. <laughs> all right. But, Mr. Chambers, you're saying the 99 plus 1 theory and your player days are in the past. Yes. That right now, you are fully committed to Ms. Jones. I unconditionally love this woman. <laughs> Tell me how this unconditional love story started between you two. Grade school. Wow. Uh, third probably grade. the third grade. Third grade? Oh, about the sixth grade, we even planned a wedding on the playing ground. Oh. oh. Now, 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 see, I, that's my first... I was destined for being a player right there. You see that? <laughs> Look you see that? That's, that's not old. player all over. That's player all over. Three years old, and he thinks that's his destiny. That's my oh, destiny right there. Up. He ain't gave it up. Look at that hat. <laughs> at some point later in life, you are reconnected. Yes. How many years passed? About 40, 42. Let yeah. me tell you how we ran across each other. That's what I was getting ready to ask. <laughs> Let me tell you. How that happened. Great story. Great she story. Wait, she, she why do you get to tell her? Hold on, because... Oh, wait, okay, I'll let her tell her. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, Ms. Jones. <laughs> now, you see... Now, see, I know y'all love each other. <laughs> because y'all fight 
fight over who gonna tell the story. Now, my parents fight over who tells the story. Like, no, no, you forgot this part. Yeah. It is so fun. So, I know. I yeah. know. Okay, tell me about this. So, I'm on my way to work one morning. This I've been going this way for almost a year, I guess. And I missed my turn. So, I had to go straight and I get to the stoplight. He's crossing the street on the phone. I hadn't seen him for over 40 years. He's crossing the street on the phone. And you recognize him? And I'm s sitting there and I'm going, that's him. He jumps in the car and I'm like, where? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my last chance. I'm like, I did what, what I going? had to do. You did what you had to I do. Knew what it was, okay, I, but I couldn't what miss another ch chance. I'm like, he must be fattening me for the kill, because he's just <laughs> being too good, you know? <laughs> Y'all could write a book about this. Right, well, what... How do we get to this point where you believe he's cheating? Because one thing, the sex kind of start falling off. Because, you know, in the beginning, it was like rabbits. Just oh, oh. Okay. okay. So, I'm like... If you say so. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm trying my little tricks and everything. It's not working. Did she <laughs> say color that she <laughs> was using her tricks and everything? Well, Did she say that? You know, when, as women mature, you get a uh, bag of tricks and you just pull them out when you need them. Oh, you really? Know, you yeah. Know. Uh -huh. Different things, you know, like what I put on or what I don't put on or whatever. And I liked it at all. And it's not... Are you saying that it has decreased and decreased, decreased significantly? It's zero. Oh. oh. Yeah, well, you can't well, get less than that. Yeah. Very significant. It's zero. <laughs> Do you believe he's having sex with somebody else? That's why he's not being able to come home? That's what's in my mind. Mm. All right. Yeah. Mr. Because Chamber. I'm not getting it, so... Uh -huh. are, are you having sex somewhere else and that's why you're not no. coming home? No, and I tried to explain to her it's physical. Okay. I tried a bunch of male enhancers. It didn't work. I seen stuff in the newspaper about clinics. They was too high. And I'm cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> I'm cheap. I'm not, I'm not paying the money and it don't work. There's some things that we're paying for, don't you think? <laughs> well, I got an old saying. Uh -oh. If you can't come from the hips, come from the lips. Ah, uh, but I... And that's what I used to do. But you know, I if you know can't come from... Ah, right. Okay. right. Okay. He did say if it... He if... said he's my hero. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> he All right. say that, but he, he ain't even doing that. So. Oh, oh my goodness. Not... So it has gone completely down to zero. <laughs> Miss Jones, tell us why else you believe he's cheating. Well, the first thing I noticed was the car would be moved. On the tachometer, which he's not techno savvy, you can set your trip mileage. So I set it to zero. When I get up in the morning, it's 11 miles. So you you're wondering anywhere? where is he going at right. night, and you probably think he's going to be with another woman. I don't know where he's going, but that's what makes me think that, yes. All right, where Mr. are you Chambers, going? Where are you going at night? Getting cigarettes. <laughs> Getting cigarettes from where? At the nearest gas station, which is about maybe six blocks away. Oh. I might have just drove around, sightseeing. Oh. All right, you know what? <laughs> We're gonna go round and round. We're never gonna get an answer. Because mm -mm. it's your story. Yeah. It's his story. But we have identified a woman who knows all about you. She knows all about this. <laughs> and she is here today. Ron, would you escort our next witness in? Yes, Ron. I want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? Good day, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. Right. Would you state your name, please, for the court? My name is Gina Chambers. And, Ms. Chambers, what is your relationship to Ms. Jones and Mr. Chambers? Uh, William Chambers is my brother. That's your brother? That's my brother. So that's how you know all about yeah, him. Yeah, I know all about him. <laughs> all right. As you know, Ms. Jones, you probably heard some of the testimony, Ms. Jones is concerned that your brother, Mr. Chambers, is cheating on her. What do you know about that? Well, yeah, I know of one incident where uh, we was out um, last year. 
we was going out to um, to our family's house out of town. So you were and, taking a family trip? Yeah, we was taking a family trip. Mm -hmm. And uh, I brought a friend with me. Okay. My friend came out the bedroom and she was like, y'all don't look. And so, you know, obviously we gonna look. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, well, you know, That's I'm looking, invitation she's to looking, look. he's looking. Mm -hmm. And so she, when she came behind the sectional, she just had a, a little small top on. Mm. No bottoms. No bottoms. No underwear. No underwear. Well, and I fell over like, oh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> and I, you know, I fell over and he jumped up like, oh my God, you know, and went to grab her. And I was just like, you know, I was looking the other way. I was like, no, she didn't. And no, he didn't. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, that's wrong. You know. You told him point blank. Yeah, point blank. You know, that's wrong. You know, Rosetta could have walked in here any because she was in the next room on the other side of the... Do you think they've been... I think he around? always liked her. Ah. And yeah. so he was an opportunity to yeah. work that yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was an opportunity. Sorry, brother. <laughs> 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 to, to work it out. Under the bus. Yeah, brother. <laughs> Under the you, bus. <laughs> you, do you think he's hung, hung up his player shoes or he's still playing? No, he ain't hang up no shoes at all. <gasps> okay, I think we've heard enough testimony. Ms. Jones, if you find out he's cheating then this beautiful relationship is going to be over. Yes, because... Oh, gosh, because... Mm. It's okay. What I want to say is... Um, it'll hurt me to leave him, but loving him hurts even more if, if I find that out. Well, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call private investigator Eric Eccles and licensed polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please report to him. Yeah. Mr. Eccles and Mr. Platt, how are both of you? Fine, Your Honor. Good. Uh, Mr. Eccles, can you tell us what you did to investigate the cheating allegations against Mr. Chambers? I sat in the room with a hidden camera with Mr. Chambers and went undercover, posing as a cheater who has been brought to court. Uh, Mr. Chambers spoke very freely about Mac and ladies <laughs> um, and his philosophy about cheating. I brought a tape. All right, let's take a look. No, I'm talking about your Mac. Oh, I bet I'm certified. <laughs> I'm certified. That's, that's I'm certified. So that kind of stuff lingers on. That ain't never going nowhere. No, that, that, that back ain't going nowhere. You yeah. know, say I did go smash somebody else. Right. It ain't because I love them. Did Mr. Chambers say anything else regarding his relationship with Ms. Jones that gave you cause for concern? Well, Your Honor, during one exchange, he did make it clear that he is pretty confident, not necessarily about the test results, but the ability to keep his woman. And I brought that tape as well. I say I didn't do it. I know I didn't do it. Even if I did do it, and it comes up that I do it, she'd rather go through a lion's den with a pork chop skirt on than to leave me. You know why? Because I'm the best thing going her life this day. You said that. Mm -hmm. And you believe that. I believe that 100 percent Let me tell you something. <laughs> tell me something. She, you better tell her something. She don't want to talk to you. She already know. I don't told her about Tell me nine. nothing. If he's lying to there's nothing he could tell me. She's not going anywhere. As I okay. quoted, I stayed in that green room. I'm the best thing going in her life today. No. Woo! <laughs> no. Mm -mm. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. <sighs> I do 99%. No, I'm not going to stick around. If you're lying, I'm not going to be there. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. She has made it clear that if you're not given 100, mm -hmm. she's not staying around. She said 99 and a half won't do. Mm -mm. No. Nope. If you're not given 100, she's out. She's okay. gone. Continue on. Mr. Platt, you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Chambers. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. You asked him a few questions. Since you began an exclusive relationship with Ms. Jones, 
Have you had sexual intercourse with another woman? What was his response? Mr. Chambers made an admission and stated yes. What do you have to tell us? And more importantly, what do you have to tell Ms. Jones? In the beginning, in 2016, when we got back together, I was also dabbling with somebody else. She yeah. confronted me about it because she seen me and the other woman's chemistry whenever she around, because I tried to lie. And so it got to the point where I admitted it. I said I did it. So he told you about this relationship? He told me about yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so this was out in the open. Yeah. All right. But we do have one more question. Since you began an exclusive relationship with Ms. Jones, have you had sexual intercourse with any other women besides Ms. Jones and the one ex? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that he was telling the truth. <laughs> Look at you. All right, Mr. Chambers. <laughs> After talking all that stuff you talked up in here today, no, I'm sure no, I'm gonna playing. do this. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna brush, yeah, you go ahead I'm gonna do brush that. my shoulders off. <laughs> yeah. So you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. How are you feeling about this? I'm feeling much better because it was getting pretty hot there for a minute. Oh. <laughs> here, give me a hug. 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 <laughs> you know I unconditionally love you. Yeah. You all have been together for four years. You have previously appeared in this courtroom. Yes. And Ms. Williams, since returning home, you have become concerned about Mr. Sims's behavior. Is that right? Yes, sir. Tell us why. All right, Mr. Judge Cutler. So I'm bringing Ben back because I fell the last time that we were here previously on the physical contact question that was asked of me. Okay. I'm... So once we got back home, you know, Ben started, I saw a lot of uh, his demeanor changing, you know, and I became very suspicious. So when I say that I became suspicious, these are the things that I noticed happening. Ben works 30 minutes away from the home. He started coming home an hour and a half late, two hours late sometimes, being on the phone, you know, but in private, you know. Um... Just things of that nature, you know? So I was like, well, let me try to get my relationship, you know, find out what's going on. Hold on. Did you all go back home and immediately things were amiss? Or did you think, okay, we've had this moment, we're moving forward, he's forgiven me, hopefully. Was there any, like, reprieve between being here in this courtroom and then the warning signs that you just talked about. So, when we were here, things seemed to be okay. Okay. Two weeks later and ongoing is when it started going downhill. So, you for a moment thought things... Okay, we're gonna get over this. Everything, things are right. right. Absolutely. Okay. And then Absolutely. that's when you start noticing his behavior. Yes. Now, I'm at the point when he come in the door, drop your pants. Drop your draw. <laughs> Lift it up. Let me check it out. You have not become a sniffer. I have. Oh. Yes, I have. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Miss huh. Williams. Let me tell you. So I want it clear. Yes. For the record. Uh huh. That you were here before. Yes, ma'am. Because Mr. Sims was accusing you of cheating. Yes, ma'am. And you failed the test physical. of physical contact That's with someone it. else. Yes. That was it. That was it. But you are left together with plans of happily ever after. Yes, ma'am. And you are here today now accusing him of cheating. Yes, ma'am. I'm innocent, Your Honor. See, it's not your okay. turn yet, sir. All right. <laughs> Mr. Sims, this... you're over there shaking. Your Honor, this is... This case is ludicrous. I gotta say that. It's ludicrous. This is all about her and her insecurities about what happened last time. I accepted what happened last time. No, you didn't. Well, she says your demeanor changed. That when you got home, all of a sudden, you started taking a longer route to work. It's not that, Your Honor. It's not I'm not taking a longer commute to work. It's just sometimes I may hang out with the fellas at the work. They used to ask me to go out, and I'd be like, well, nah, you know, I'm gonna go home and just kick back with my lady, and that's that. But it's just now, you know, I want to be more interactive with my friends. I'm starting to hang out more. That's about it. There's nothing more to, to... No more to it than that. What about the private calls? Like she said, now you I... go and take these private phone calls. Why are you doing that now? I don't have a problem. That's her own insecurities again. 
There's yeah. no private phone calls involved in this. I, if she's on, like, a lot of times she's watching television and she's yelling at me, be quiet, I'm watching Loving Hip Hop or something, or doing this or doing that. And so I'm, I'm gonna go in the next room and start talking to whoever because she really don't want to pay me any attention at that moment. You know, I don't... But you're saying you're not talking to other women when you're in no, the other sir. room. No, sir. I'm a little petty. I get it. I'm part of the petty gang. Yeah, I do things <laughs> to get on underneath her skin. You passed the petty gang. Uh, I... So what do you do to get underneath her skin as it relates to, you know, her allegations against you of cheating? I, I might take a pop shot at her, too. Be like, you know, like, if it's, like say, we could be sitting there watching you guys on TV. I was like, and then somebody get caught on something, I was like, hey, babe, you, you know, I'll make throw a little slide in there. You got caught, remember, you know, she... Oh! So, so, the she very, so the very thing we tell people, look, don't keep bringing up the past, you got to move don't forward past this. You're, out of a good relationship. Your you're using that to take shots at her. <laughs> yes. Don't cheat yourself yes. out of a good relationship yes. now. Yes. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. So you're in the petty gang. Yes, ma'am. And you're kind of taking pot shots. You've owned that. But are you oh. petty enough to cheat? I'm not petty enough to cheat. Yes, you are. So he said he's part of the petty gang, but he's saying he's not cheating. What makes you think that he is cheating? I have a few instances. Okay. Okay. Doing laundry one day. Oh. Putting clothes away. I see these size 13 purple underwear. I wear size 8, honey. I ain't that big. Where these 13s come from? Ooh. Ben says, oh, I don't know. What you mean? How did you get in our laundry, Ben? Miss Williams, yeah. when you found these patterns, what did you do? What you mean? I went off. All right. I'm like, we're not gonna talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. I've been doing your laundry for five years. There's you... no other panties in there but these size eight. And you Where confront... these thirteens come from? And you confront him about it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Sims, did she confront all... you about these panties? It was all Greek to me. Did she I confront you about? She confronted me. I mean, I'm sitting there watching the TV and bam, <laughs> here they come. And I'm what did like... you tell her? It wasn't me. <laughs> That's who else could it have been if it wasn't you? Your Honor, I don't know who it was, but it wasn't Ben. Were you being petty? Was this an instance where you <laughs> no, grabbed sir. some woman's no, panties I'm, I'm petty, just Your to Honor, get her riled up? Petty. <laughs> but nah, I'm petty, but not that petty. <laughs> not that petty. <laughs> Never. Not that petty. Okay, so these were underwear that were not like yours. Nothing. Nothing like no, yours. They were with his life. Your Honor. Ma'am. Now, did he, were they in a hamper or something like that? Because we have the dirty clothes hamper. So I go and I separate the clothes to have them washed, you know, and here these 13s are. Same color as the shirt, actually. So, Ms. Williams, now we know what you've seen. Have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Absolutely. Well, we were uh, <laughs> cleaning out his car one day. Oh, boy. And uh, I see him, you know, so we're talking, you know, getting along, whatever, and I see him reach down real quick to try and pick a condom up. Oh. I said, oh, no, 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 no. What is that? Oh, Jeanette, here you go, because he calls me Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette, here you go with this. Let me see this condom. Where this condom come from? So I put him out. He tells me that it was this, this man here, my brother, Mr. Williams. His condom. So you all are cleaning out his car. His, his car. OK. And the condom falls. But he trying to hurry up and scramble some paper over the stuff to cover it up. So you couldn't see it? So I couldn't see it. But I got four eyes. <laughs> so I'm going to see this real quick. Mr. Sims. Mr. Did, Sims. Did the condom fall out? Your Honor, yes, it did fall out. Okay. Where did it fall out from? It was in between the seat <laughs> and the, you know, yeah. between, I was cleaning in yeah. between the seat, you know, where people sit in your seat right there. I, when I seen it, I was like, oh, God. So you tried to get it. I, I'm saying, oh, God, I just, this not, this, I just, I got the, if it wasn't for bad luck, I have no luck at all, Your Honor. So oh. I said, okay. So I, I, I handed the, well, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. And what did you tell her? I said, it was my brush. It was his. So he didn't drop any keys, he didn't drop any change, he didn't drop any dollars, he didn't drop his wallet. The only thing he dropped is a magnum. Was a condom. <laughs> No. Your Honor, it may My sound crazy, you. but it's the truth. You right. You brought a witness with you. Yes, sir. All right, sir, would you stand up and step to the podium, please? <clears throat> and would you state your name, please, for the record? Alfred Williams. And Mr. Williams, what is your relationship to Miss Williams and Mr. Sims? Miss Williams is my sister and it's my brother-in-law, Benjamin. So the plaintiff, Miss Williams, is your sister? His yes, sister. sir. 
Okay. And you look at this. And you testifying for Mr. Sims. You see this? I'm here to tell the truth to get the truth out. What? Okay. Right. Oh. Mm. And what is the truth? The truth is that it was that my it condom. That it was your condom. It was it my was condom. Man's. It was your condom. Yes. So why was your condom <laughs> in Mr. Sims's car? Because he gave me a ride to my friend's house. And when I got to my friend's house, went there to go, you know, have a little party with my friend. And when I got there... How convenient. I realized that I didn't have what I came with. So... <laughs> it was... So it just turned into a Netflix night. So we just... Ne Netflix and chill. For real. So when he came back to pick me up, I didn't even... I had such a good time, I didn't even realize that... My pump, that the condom was in his car. I probably figured it. I probably dropped it outside the car or probably just forgot it at home. And that's your story? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You may be seated. <laughs> Ms. W Ms. Williams, you, 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 is... you're not buying any of this. Here. None of it. And you my brother. What are you doing? <laughs> you should be over here. <laughs> what are you doing? I, that does raise a question. Why would your brother lie. Hmm. I mean, what does he have to gain Because they always if it's not, not the together. Truth? I don't know. They probably, I don't know, messing with sisters or something. Oh, oh boy. So you just went right there. I did. As and, always. But don't you think, you mean, your brother and you have grown up together. What's he that mean? Well, I'm just saying, he, he knows like, you're a force to reckon with. I am. And I just would think he'd think twice about it, because you're going to be mm. his sister forever. Yeah. I would think well, that... after these results come back, I don't know. I might disown both of them. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, Mr. Cutler, I think we got enough. Let me tell you what we got. <laughs> Mr. Sims is coming home late from work, and they, he's only about 10, 15 minutes from home, and it's taking him an hour and a half, two hours. And then a condom falls out when they're cleaning the car, and he says, it's not mine, it's your brother's. And she doesn't believe any of it. She's like, it's yours. And well, I don't know why my brother's doing this. And for these reasons, she believes that Mr. Sims is cheating. And Mr. Sims, you deny all of this. Yes, sir. I deny it all. Well, uh, we're about to find out. I said, oh, that's right. Because this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Tommy Platt. Mr. Platt, how are you? Good, Your Honor. It's good to see you. Good to see y'all. Now, Mr. Platt, you have over 30 years of law enforcement experience and 11 years as a polygraph examiner, correct? Yes, sir. You've done thousands of polygraph examinations. Yes, sir. And you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Sims, correct? I did. You know what, love? This is just something I noted. When we talked to him about is he cheating and all the evidence against him, his response sounded a lot like Ms. Williams when she was standing over there. Mm. It's just very interesting that... I don't know if you noted it, but I did. And so, I, I do, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, she, yeah. and... she failed her test. At least just one. one. Just yeah, one. just one. But just, just one, one, but she did <laughs> fail. All right, and all you right. saying that's not gonna happen to no, you? No, it's not gonna happen to yeah, you. All right. Same thing. All right. You asked Mr. Sims, does the underwear your girlfriend found belong to another woman with whom you had sexual intercourse? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that he was being truthful. You asked Mr. Sims, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Miss Williams since returning from this court? What was his response? He stated no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Well, we have one more question. You also asked Mr. Sims, have you had physical sexual contact with any woman other than Ms. Williams since returning home from this court? What was his response? He stated yes, he confessed. Well, did he give an explanation with that? Um, Your Honor, he stated that he went to a strip club a few weeks ago and he paid for 
four lap dances. Grab some boobs, butts, and the strippers grinded on his man section. <laughs> and so that was what the sexual contact was you were referring I didn't to. Lie about it, Your Honor. I went to the strip club. All right, Miss Williams. He has admitted to contact with a stripper or more. So, what are you thinking right now? No, this might be the end for us. Cause there's no reason to go to a strip club and get four. Would, would it have been better if he got one? It wouldn't have been better if he got none. He shouldn't have been there. Let me strip for you. Give me them dollars. You know, some people don't consider going to a strip club being unfaithful. Oh, I do. You consider you that unfaithful. You got other breasts in your face. You got, you know, private areas riding your manhood. That's cheating. In your mind, that's cheating? Yeah, absolutely. That's that same test I failed, right? Physical contact. But... Same one. In my mind... There is a vast difference between an ongoing relationship with a particular woman as opposed to that's what strip clubs are about. Now, that's a conversation that, you know, I think couples should have. What do I consider to be cheating? Now, I am not hardly trying to tell you to keep him or take him home with you, but I do think it's a huge difference between going to a strip club and hook it up with a co-worker. Somebody he gonna see every day. And the thing is, he admitted to it. He didn't deny it. Yeah. Well, he should have took me, too. Well, that's a, con- that's a grown folks conversation I don't want to be a part of, but I know couples who go to uh, strip clubs together. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there for you to think about that. Now, you each have been at that podium. You were at the podium last time. She's at the podium this time. Each of you has been the one that's been accused. You've each had your turn now. Enough. We don't want to see you back in this court again (laughs) as litigants.